Well, joining us now is fella Gloucester. Glosterian, is that the word? Glosterian, former government advisor James Price. Hiya, James, how are you doing? Now, I know that you're somebody who uh, has experience in this field, so to speak, some skin in the game, let's say. But do you think uh, Mel Stride has a point where he says there are way too many people signed off work when it comes to mental health who probably don't really have a sort of bona fide mental health condition and might actually benefit from sort of rolling up their sleeves, getting into the office and socialising and being occupied with something? Yeah, I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head, my fellow Glossestrian, as I think the, the, the word is. <laughs> um, no, I think Mel Stride's absolutely right about this. Um, and it was really interesting, just before your break, you had two different people calling in, one saying there's not nearly enough attention being put to mental health, and others saying, yeah, far too much. And I think maybe both of them can be can be right. I think if you really do struggle with these things, I've been quite open um, about a really you know, serious uh, level of, of depression in the past that I'm, I'm very fortunately much, much better from. You know, when you really are at your wit's end, these things do feel terrible. It's all consuming. You can't work. And, you know, it really is one of the worst things that can happen to somebody in the developed world because, you know, suicide is the biggest killer of men, I think, between the ages of 18 and 50, something like that, partly because you know, other things aren't very likely to get you uh, and therefore you're more likely to get yourself. It can be really, really terrible. But at the same time, as we're seeing now, I think far too many people are, are leaning on these things when and really actually having a job, having a purpose, all these things. And even frankly, just things like fresh air and exercise and all those sorts of things are more effective than medicalizing people and saying, yeah, you know what? Yeah, do stay home and just vegetate lost in your own thoughts on the sofa. That's not good for lots of people. Do you know what I think would be good for everybody's mental health if we all had a Margaret Thatcher a cushion yeah, can behind us. Bring that into focus a bit more, James. <laughs> very, I want to very, see that, very James. impressed by that, uh, by that. James. Uh, but to, to be more serious, uh, this is what I think. I mean, 20,000 people a day phone in to say I'm sick due to mental health issues. That that can't be the case. Uh, and we are being far too overarching about what mental health issues are. In other words, people now say I've got mental health issues because they're sad. They're grieving, they've lost a loved one, they've split up from their wife or their husband, something like that. That's not a mental... On the cushion, it's a sort of window into my soul, isn't it? Yes. No, I, I think that's absolutely right. That uh, It depends if you've got a company policy on these things, right? If people can be flexible with work, you know, if, if you have a bereavement or a breakup, these things can have a real problem where you get to live and all those sorts of things. And employers, rightly, I think, should be flexible on these things. I think the biggest problem comes when it's the rest of the taxpayers who have to pick up the burden for these things. We act in our welfare policy far too often like we're still a rich country. And unfortunately, you know, we're really not that rich a country anymore that we can afford to be doing these kinds of things. If we had the kind of growth rates of America, then then maybe we could we could spend some of that money on being a lot more lenient and gentle. But even then, I don't think that's the right thing to do. As you say, when someone has a real problem and they get diagnosed with help, then there's therapy, there's even medicine and I think extreme examples that can really help some people. But again, in so many cases, as Ronald Reagan said, the best social welfare program in the world is getting a job. And I know from my own experience, and, and we shouldn't always draw on just our own experience to, to extrapolate that to everybody, but when you do get yourself a job, it gets you back, gives you a reason to get out of bed in the morning and you feel like you're contributing, you feel like you're making an impact and you can affect change in the world again, it is almost like magic. The more people that get that rather than yeah. shying away from it, I think it'd be a wonderful thing. I mean, is it not the case then that it's fair to say that humans are social animals, not social media animals? And what's happened really in the 21st century is we're working more relentlessly because our devices don't turn off, work comes home with us. We're also being increasingly siloed. So despite having all of these various digital connections, we're actually physically seeing and spending less time with other human beings. And rather than always sort of trying to prescribe the cure, oh, we need more therapists, oh, we need more people on antidepressants, we need as a country to start looking at the cause. Yeah, I think that's another great point. And normally I like being in the studio with you and technology means that today I'm, I'm beaming down from, from home or a, a Margaret Thatcher cushion warehouse. Um, so yeah, there are amazing things that we've got, but we're still very, very new in terms of things like mobile phones and social media, how they have an impact on us. And I think it's really interesting that the debate that's being had now about children, about young people getting these things, because I think they get sucked into this world where they see all these supposedly happy people with lots of money and who are very beautiful and all these things, not realizing it goes through lots of filters and all of the rest of it. I think there's a real problem that we're going to have. And I think that it must be a huge part of these numbers of uh, been people who get stuck on these phones. I think TikTok, probably the worst thing about it. 
you know, the, the kind of videos that you get served up on TikTok in China, it's the kind of food equivalent of spinach. And the stuff that we get served up on TikTok in the West is the equivalent of crack cocaine. So I think it's just a terrible bit for our mental health mm. as well. I agree. Uh, now, uh, we've got to get to the very important issue The most now. important issue of all. What the hell does it say on your Margaret Thatcher yeah. cushion, please? <laughs> it's the classic old Tory slogan. Don't just hope for a better life. Vote for one. Yeah, um, every time yeah. you vote to Margaret Thatcher, they got a better life. Yeah, uh, yeah. In, in Margaret I Thatcher's day, one? that slogan was true. Now, I fear not so much. I want a Thatcher pillow, sort of, Richard yeah. James. You can give it to me at the cheese wall. I'll run down Cooper's Hill for it if you like. <laughs> Put yourself more, a deal. More West Country <laughs> talk. Great to talk to you, as always, James. See you Thanks soon. So much, Thank guys. you. Bye.